nerfs to raids, improvements to bundles, redstone changes, and much more. Hello there, Ray here, and we got a brand new snapshot for 1.21.2 upcoming Java edition. This is 24W35A. This snapshot brings changes not only to the game, but also a lot of bug fixes. They made some improvements to bundles, so now when you hover over top of the bundle, if you want to access one of the items inside, instead of using your number keys to move to different items within the slot, they now change it so you can use your scroll wheel to scroll through all the different items. This is actually much easier to do, because typically every mouse has a scroll wheel on it, rather than the number keys which are a little bit harder to reach on the keyboard, especially if your fingers are on the WASDA keys. And once you have scrolled over to the item you want, if you just right click you can pull that specific item out of the bundle. Now the reason why they did this whole scrolling thing rather than number key thing is because you actually use the number keys to move items from your inventory into your hotbar down here. So if I hover over this bundle and push 2 it's going to go to the 2 slot down here, pushing 3 we'll put that one in the 3 slot. You can even switch items within this, so I can switch this item with that item, however you want to easily move stuff around. And this wasn't possible with the previous number keys being used to select items within the bundle. And I also seen a couple of you guys suggest this scrolling improvement over the number pad. In my recent community tab poll, for those of you guys that had the bell notification turned on while also having it set to all, you'll get informed about these community posts, and I did a poll asking, do you guys like the recent new bundle changes? And you can see the majority of the people liked them, but only for early game. Second place was people that liked them overall, as you could still use bundles in later game to hold different workstations directly inside of your inventory here without having to constantly place on a shulker box to pull out these items that would just take up too much room in your actual inventory. Besides workstation, you can also carry a small amount like a redstone in case you need to fix something or just some basic items like iron string and bone meal or even some wood rather than having those items fill up all your other slots which you might be using for a certain build. But for most things people can definitely think how they would work early game when you're traveling picking up tons of new items and not really having a base or a shulker box or ender chest to put them into yet. Now 8% of the people did not actually like new changes and I was actually pretty surprised that people didn't like it because it felt like they were making some improvements. A lot of people wanted them to just open up like a backpack or a shulker box so you can easily grab stuff out of them. But remember the developers don't want the bundles to replace shulker boxes so they can't be too easy or too useful especially if they're designed for early game and are relatively cheap to build. What some people complained about they actually like the rabbit skin over the leather even though you can make rabbit hide into leather this is what makes it more useful than just having rabbit hide. That way you can get the leather for not only rabbits, but you can also get them from other things like cows and even horses, which makes a bundle easier to get throughout whatever biome you're traveling. But there does still seem to be a problem where if you have items towards the end of filling up a bundle, such as this piece of leather, but if I remove this piece of leather, notice how everything slides back so you can actually see more items. As soon as I put in this item here, it all of a sudden leaves this really big gap with no items showing. If they would fix that, then you could see a bit more of your items. Otherwise, you could purposely just leave only 12 unique items in your bundle. And that way, you can easily see everything that's inside them and then just make a second bundle. You don't have to guess what's in the other slots that can't be seen. They also changed several things with the bundles, such as when you rename the bundle, the name will no longer just go off to one direction, but instead be centered on it. And things that are renamed inside will also show up, with rare items now having their text also being colored. And if you put overstacks in your bundle, the bundle's progress bar won't go off the page. But what do you think of these new bundle changes? Plus, I really enjoyed reading all your guys' comments about what you thought about the bundles and how you think they could be improved upon. And on my post about being behind on videos, thank you for all the amazing comments and thoughtful words. So in 1.21, they tried to make it so that raids couldn't be instantly completed just by having the raiders spawn really far away from the players so that they would instantly be removed. Yet the game thought you actually completed the raid and if you even killed a raider during this process, you could get the Hero of the Village advancement. In order to try to fix this problem, they made it so that the raiders could only spawn in with so many wide levels of the actual village. Our village is hiding over here. But with that change, it also broke it so that when it came to the different areas where it can spawn in the raiders, as it tries to first spawn them out 64 blocks, then 32 blocks, and then lastly, very close to the center of the village, this very center area was messed up so that it would only spawn in raiders at the same wide level as the actual village, where the other rings would spawn them up this high, which was causing the problem that if you would start a raid on a small island, it's possible that the raiders couldn't find this platform because the villager might be a little bit higher or lower than this exact Y level. 
that was all fixed today. So now if the raid tries to get placed in, if it can't make it out 64 blocks, there's no area such as like there's water or can't place it in within 32 blocks, then they'll search multiple Y levels in order to place them here in the center. So in this snapshot, they change it so that the raiders will have to find a spot within 96 blocks above or below the village vertically, or the raid will just not start. Now, as you guys know, I've designed a multitude of different type of raid farms throughout the village and pillage snapshots and updates, including the first raid farms of some types. And in the raid farms where we have the raid outside of the area of where the raiders are in order to get the ominous bottles, we purposely move the village center way down low so that the village cannot detect the actual raiders and that way they're technically outside of the boundaries and we can get the bottles. But because of this new limitation of 96 blocks, it's likely that the villager being way down low will still be able to detect the raiders. And if you move the villager any further, then all of a sudden it will be out of range of your spawning platform. Therefore, the villager down below will, will think there's no place to spawn in the raiders. So you might only get like one wave to come through. So the strategy might be to actually do all the waves except for the last wave and then just move the last wave out of the range and then kill that one to, to get more ominous bottles. Or it's possible just to move the raiders a little bit higher up so that they're out of range and then just kill them there. Now besides this change, they also made it so that it is a lot less likely for raiders to not find a location to actually spawn it. So that means it's more likely for them to actually find one of these places to spawn in. Typically the center area where they can spawn in is a 5x5 and in this simple design of mine I'm only using 9 of the 5x5 spots. I think there's like a 90 some percent chance of succeeding but then there's always that small chance of failing. But with these recent changes it should make it much much higher that it actually succeeds and therefore we can get all the waves to come in despite the area being really small. And who knows we might be able to shrink this area down even further more while still having high percentages of succeeding. Sorry if this is all a bit confusing, I'll try to explain this in more depth in an upcoming video about my new raid farm. And I will be live streaming working on my new raid farm after you guys finish watching this video. So check me out with the link down in the description to my stream. And I even have a testing server open to all my viewers so you can check out all the newest snapshot stuff on there. Now in the redstone experimental snapshots, there was a problem with observers not detecting the change of redstone dust on top. So if I would turn on this redstone dust, it should create an update that goes down and updates this piston over here, but the observer was completely ignoring these redstone changes. So now this will work once again. So there was a problem with the recently added in salmon that come out with different sizes. When you turn on their hitboxes, they're actually all the same hitbox size, despite them being different visual sizes. This was actually not intended, even though I thought this was completely normal, as I thought they just wanted to have some kind of variation in looks when it comes to salmon. But apparently they actually want them to be different sizes for hitbox as well. So like the little ones will actually be really small hitboxes making them harder to hit but the bigger ones will have a bigger hitbox so you can easily hit them. Now this shouldn't really have any impact on my salmon farm or my other water mob farms which you can check out here linked below. And if you do pick up one of these bigger ones inside of a bucket when you place them down again it's going to keep whatever size salmon you put in there. Speaking of buckets, they fix a snapshot only bug where if you would try to fill up an empty bucket, it would just delete your entire bucket. This was due to some creative only changes that they did last time, but you won't have to worry about this anymore. And glass bottles will no longer get deleted. This deleting problem also applied to armor when you're trying to swap out armor by using the right click. Notice that it did put in my netherite armor, but it completely deleted my diamond armor, which is also a snapshot only bug and has been resolved. Another snapshot only bug is that snow golems when trying to attack something would just end up shooting straight upwards instead of actually aiming towards their target. This and snow golem just happened to break this ender crystal. Wow, well done. Even did it with the cage on top of it. That's pretty impressive. This is so hilarious, but yeah, it's fixed. During the snapshot, they accidentally made it so drowns would hold their tridents upside down when attacking. So that was fixed as well as this problem where the drowns weren't actually raising their hands up similar to zombies when attacking on land. If drowns were just in a single layer of water, they wouldn't actually come after and attack the player. This was actually a big problem in my early drown farms as their pathfinding was completely messed up. But now this is fixed we can improve upon some types of drown farms. So look forward to some new ones on my channel. 
Another old bug related to drowns and other zombie types is that when they would attack a wandering trader, their associated llamas would not actually attack back, as these llamas can spit and they're supposed to help defend the wandering trader. So now the trading llamas will actually help out the wandering trader like they're supposed to after all these years of being in the game. They fix a problem related to bees that's been out ever since bees were introduced and that is sometimes when bees would go to their hive or nest in the end dimension or the nether dimension, they would never end up leaving their hive once they went inside. This had to do with how the weather was over in the overworld which would cause them to get in this glitched state. Now no matter what the weather is in the overworld, they'll continue to go in and out over in these biomes where there is no day or weather. Also, if you silk touch some bee nest or hives, there was no way of really telling if there was bees inside. So now they added in an extra lore to let you know. And if you pick block one of these hives that are full while you're in creative mode, this is supposed to give you an item that has the honey already inside of the hive. But if I place this down, we weren't actually getting any honey and there was no honey in the image. So after this fix, you can now get these honey filled hives as item form in creative. Ominous Trials versions of the breeze spawners are supposed to produce two breezes each time, but sometimes they're only producing one, so now they'll always do two. One running on soul sand with the soul speed enchantments on your boots. Notice every time you land your jump, all of a sudden your player stops with all their momentum and then they have to start it up again. This was actually a bug that accidentally got into 1.21 update, so now it's been reverted back so that you'll continue to move quickly. They accidentally introduce it so that the cooldown on food like chorus fruit, which you can't eat too fast. So normally when you get done eating it, there'll be a cooldown before you can eat it again. But this cooldown would trigger every time you just attempt to start eating it, even if you would stop halfway through. Which means if you wanted to eat it after accidentally failing to eat it, you'd have to wait for the entire cooldown, which is not intended, so they revert it back to the way it was before. They accidentally made it so that if players stood close to a block, you would get the effects of those blocks despite not actually colliding with them. This was not intended, so they reverted it back. Another snapshot only bug is if you would bone mill really short water, there's a chance that it would produce in some tall seagrass, but the tall seagrass would generate above the actual water level. This of course was not intended, so has been removed. Items that are enchanted will once again show that they're actually enchanted instead of sometimes looking like the unenchanted version. They also fix a few bugs related to maps like how the color different blocks show up on them. Now when in creative mode normally you would ignore the bubble columns but during these snapshots they accidentally made it so that creative players would get affected by them so now they remove that so you can easily build around them without constantly getting shoved upwards the game will no longer crash in snapshots due to shader changes. Now come chill during my live stream over at Twitch or check out this playlist about weird glitches I found over the years. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye bye!